Hello guys, very good morning. This is Dr. Ranjit, your pathology educator at an academy. So here we are going to read something which is very very fresh and new to the entire world. We are going to read about WHO 2021, the updates in the CNS. Because as you might have known that the WHO as keeps uh, re-emphasizing all the important points of the tumor every four years. The last 2016 classification of CNS has been uh, taken a hit and they have changed a lot. They have introduced more than 20 plus new tumors. They have changed their way of reporting. They have changed from the Roman numericals to num number 1, 2, 3 and 4. They have changed the structure of reporting. They have called something as layered reporting. I am waiting for the book to come out. They're just the article has come out as of now. The book says that there will be essential criteria and desirable criteria present for every tumor. That will make our life much much more easier. right? So what we are going to do is we will have multiple videos on the update of WH 2021 and I hope I will have a live class session as well for you guys because sometimes it will be easy for us to discuss in the live rather than just having it as a video. fine. So in this video we are going to have the update, the first update of WHO 2021 CNS this is especially for postgraduates. Maybe I will use the highlights of the update and I will share it with you on the telegram group for your undergraduates as well for your NEET exam. Might not come for any set but definitely it might come for the NEET exam because last time when the update came in WHO 2016, the glioblastoma, the multiforming removal became a big question. So something of that might come here because now also there is a change in glioblastoma. They have said that if it's a pediatric tumor, high grade tumor, don't use glioblastoma. They have reclassified the entire pediatric tumors. Let's go ahead and see it. Okay. So then an article has come and these are all the tumors which are newly recognized. It's it's not it's an incomplete list. There are a few more. I cannot put it in an entire screenshot, so I put it here. Right. There are more than 20 plus tumors which have been newly recognized. And they have changed the name from the older editions. The emphasis has become totally molecular. Rather than having a uh, microscopy based diagnosis and IHC based diagnosis, they are slowly shifting towards molecular. We saw this trend even in WHO 2016, that was the CNS, right? Now it's become more towards molecular. I think you, we will have a scenario in down in future where we will not be able to diagnose any cancers without molecular genetics. Hopefully that will come. If that comes, the errors of reporting might reduce a lot because uh, sometimes the pleomorphism or the mitosis, it might be a difference between pathologists. When I say it is muted for evening sarcoma, it is evening sarcoma. So the difference of opinion will come down the inter-individual variationship will come down so it will be a better clarity in the diagnosis and be useful for the patient as well fine so in this what you're going to see is how the pediatric gliomas are redefined we'll see about the low grade and high grade group of pediatric gliomas and maybe we will be seeing about one tumor from low grade and one tumor from high grade and the subsequent videos will cover all the new entities because many tumors in the low grade and high grade glioma group are new and many of them has been reclassified renamed as well right so as such, pediatric glioma was not an important entity in the previous edition where the concentration was predominant in adult gliomas. Now pediatric glioma has also been recognized a lot and they also said that it's more important because pediatric gliomas, if I'm able to take care of them, the prognosis is not as dismal as in adult gliomas, right? Though it may look bad in microscopy, the molecular genetics is good and there are few drugs which have been developed on the go which might help in the management as well. So low grade glioma has four tumors and the high grade glioma has four tumors. That's how they are divided. The four tumors in low grade glioma and all these are new tumors. The polymorphous low grade neuroepithelium of the young. I have a case on this. I've taken two cases. Both of them are from the articles. One is from the article which released, uh, which has the entire WHO 2021 update and one more from the reference article. I have diffuse astrosoma, astrosoma MYB related. Before them, we are calling them an isomorphic middle end gliomas. The isomorphic middle end gliomas now has been kind of which has MYB alteration, they come under grade 1. So, the isomorphic middle end glioma, though they look pleomorphic, they behave very, very, very subtly. So, they have reclassified them to low grade group with MYB alteration, so they have a better prognosis. Same with angiocentric glioma and a diffuse low grade glioma, MAP kinase pathway related, right? And we have a diffuse high grade glioma with another mutation related, okay? So these are the four tumors which comes in the low grade groups in your pediatric gliomas in the new classification of WH 2021. When you come to the high grade group, it's diffuse midline glioma. Like I said that there's a low grade glioma, there's a high grade glioma. The mutation is different. That is MAP kinase pathway mutated. 
Here's H3. H3, this H3 will keep on coming. These are all histone modifications. This WHO has been said that the major change which happened was in the methylation studies. I'm going more towards epigenetics, moving from genetics to go towards more epigenetics. All these histone modifications, why I'm moving towards epigenetics is, or the methylation studies is, I might alter them. Because all these are reversible changes, unlike a mutation, which is which is in permanent chain, right? So H3K27 altered, diffuse hemispheric glioma, we have a case of this, H3G34 altered, okay? And a diffuse pediatric glioma, again H3 wild type, IDH wild type. I'm sure you know what wild type is. Whenever you use term wild type, it is not mutated, right? So non-mutated for H3, non-mutated for IDH, I call them diffuse pediatric glioma. And I have an infantile type hemispheric glioma, right? These are, these are the four terms for new classifications and most of them are new here and few of them are reclassified. And the major update here is do not use the term glioblastoma for a pediatric population. Don't use the term glioblastoma because though it's high-grade glioma, I'll have an update here. The H3 G34 34 mutation has a targeted therapy. Right? We'll just have a look about them. That's why I'm saying that the prognosis is not so dismal compared to a high-grade glioma of the adult. So I'm trying to reclassify them, segment them molecularly so that I'll be able to target them specifically with this, this tumor. So maybe the prognosis will alter. Right? So we'll have a two lesions here. The one is, uh, I said, the polymorphous low-grade neuroepithelium of the young. Uh, the abbreviation is known. I want you to know the abbreviation. Fine. As I said, I have two cases. We'll look at both these cases and then we'll look at the explanation of the cases, the morphology as given in the uh, reference articles and also the INCs. Right. So this was given in the article which gave all the difference. See, it's, it's one thing if you look at the first image, what looks it's looking like a small round cell and it looks a few of them has kind of a perinuclear halo, right? kind of have an, has an oligo, like especially here in this corner. There are four cells or five cells here. All of them have a perinuclear halo. Kind of looks like an oligodendroglioma-like morphology, right? So the oligodendroglioma-like morphology, the most important thing here is, look at the second image. It doesn't look good. It doesn't at all look good. So it said that this polymorphous, that's why it's termed polymorphous, right? It's not pleomorphic, we call them polymorphous. Polymorphous, low-grade neuroepithelium of the young. The reason why this becomes very very important for me is if I'm going to report it on a histomorphology, I will say that it is atypia. When such an amount of atypia is present, obviously I'm going to push them into grade 2 in the previous classification. So it's not a grade 2. Though it looks bizarre, I do have a little bit of pleomorphism. That's why I named them polymorphous. It's not pleomorphism, it's not atypia, it's not the high grade nature, it looks ugly, that's all. And we said that okay, this is how the tumor is gonna be. And the most characteristic finding here is CD34. All these tumors are CD34 positive. It's not only a tumor. Option the figure D given here, it's actually not the tumor it is there. <clears throat> it's seen in the surrounding um, brain parenchyma. Even the surrounding brain parenchyma, the CD34 is going to be highlighted in the neurites. So what they're saying is CD34 is kind of a stem cell marker. So stem cell expression in the neurites are becoming more, so they become more proliferative, that's all. And they're seen in the pediatric age group. In spite of the intracellular variation, I'm going to report this in low grade glioma and that this glioma has been categorized under WHO1, fine, okay. Second case, again the same case, I'm going to take it from a different uh, journal, clinical neuropathological journal, same, the first image you look, it's monotonous population, it's not the same image but a different case, it almost looks the same, right. So it's identical even, uh, between the cases also I don't have much of a variation, again I have cells which is a classical oligodendroglioma like morphology. That's more promising here. So I should not mistake it for an oligodendroglioma and do my uh, uh, 1P90Q deletion, which might not be present here, right? So there is kind of a morphological overlap, which can be sorted if I know the lesion and if I can diagnose them, right? Again, the second image, they look pleomorphic, right? Though here also I can see the classical oligodendroglioma like morphology. The background fibrillary cytoplasm is still maintained. But I do have a little bit of flame of some, so I'm going to be worried whether it's an, if it's malignant or not. So in spite of the pleomorphism and the same intertumoral heterogeneity, I'm going to think of a low-grade glioma only. Once you know this, definitely we'll do on CD34. See, CD34 is diffusely positive. Again, CD34 is not a marker which is rare, which can be easily available in most of our hospitals. I can apply that. Same thing, the same uh, a journal also gives an image that 
this is in the normal surrounding brain parenchyma the normal surrounding brain parenchyma which may be like the premioplastic lesion it's also expressing more of cd34 so that's a characteristic finding here it's not only the tumor the surrounding brain parenchyma astroglial cells also would have an elevated cd34 expression okay we saw two cases for this thing and let's go ahead and see what they describe in the tumor the who grade one tumor it's an as an infiltrating pattern and this is more, again more classical when i say who grade one we always say that it's, it's a defined lesion i can take it more right they do have an infiltrating pattern but still they are who grade one so definitely if i don't know this entity because of the infiltration the plume motion we are going to upgrade the lesion so knowing this entity and giving a better diagnosis will aim at a better prognosis for an infant right and as i said that we also appreciated that we had an oligodendrous glial cell like problem right at the perinuclear halo the most important thing is the intratumoral heterogeneity lots of variations uniform small round cells can be there perinuclear halo something can have sprinkle grooves as well right we don't we didn't see grooves but definitely we appreciated the pleomorphism for sure that's why we use the term polymorphous we are not calling it pleomorphism very uh, with thoughtful nature we use the term polymorphous so it's not actually the atypia its appearance looks different that's all pericapillary pseudorosy thing was also noted in few though it's not a characteristic finding in spite of the pleomorphism in spite of the infiltrating pattern web index or my case scan is less than 5% most of them is less than 5% in spite of the variation so definitely it is a low grade lesion so if you have seen any case previously i want you to look back at the case apply a cd34 maybe i'm going to reclassify the case you can do that you can do that and you can send the information to the neuro neurosurgeon they also is going to be happy i'm going to downgrade the tumor maybe the treatment will change based on the new classification net changes that might help for the patients as well fine this is ihc cd34 is the most important thing that was was appreciated in both things olig2 has become very famous in this who classification olig2 expression will be there and now and retain attracts if it's not be lost it's fine and gfp is going to be weakly positive so it's it's a glial lesion it's that's why we call them neuroepithelial lesion of the lung right so glial marker is going to be weakly positive here and the most important thing is this the surrounding neurites also will be cd34 positive it's not just a tumor cell the surrounding background also will have the cd34 positivity right so i hope you will be able to diagnose this condition in future it's polymorphous low grade neuroepithelioma of the lung fine okay let's go to the second one so that was one in the low grade glioma we'll have a look quick look about one in the high grade glioma as well the high grade glioma we saw many of them like diffuse hemispheric glioma diffuse glioma two history mutated one wild type one idh mutated and infantile type glioma right so you're going to just going to see diffuse hemispheric glioma h3 is a histone mutated g34 mutation in the h3 in the histone okay so to diagnose this you might be required to acquire the ihc of histone or send it for molecular genetics because histone ihcs are available though it is a bit difficult to standardize them if you are okay with that please go ahead and if you have a heavy load of neuropathology cases in your uh, institute please go ahead and do it so this is this was the one case which was described in the article which gave up the wh2020 classification it's a completely like a pnat like morphology like a small round blue cell and they have a very strong positive immunohistochemistry for my h and my stone uh, 3 g34 r by v variant fine so if you have the ihc my diagnosis straight forward otherwise i can use the existing ihc and with the background knowledge i can go and diagnose this patient as well if not please send it for molecular genetics without molecular genetics it will be difficult for me to diagnose them i can suspect them but i cannot write it out okay it is diffuse uh, hemispheric glioma h3 g34 mutated fine so the one thing is this tumor also has lots of uh, microscopic appearance there are four classical microscopic appearances which are described i have in, encountered everything and i do have the images for all of them again from uh, i think a neuropathology journal i forgot the journal name right so i, I can have a pnet like morphology like that what we saw initially like a small round blue cell they have anaplastic features generally a pnet will not be too much anaplastic here la anaplastic lesions will have an endothelial cell proliferation they are high grade for sure they are negative for olig2 and as i said that olig2 has got a very very important role in this who classification they are positive for p53 and atrax is lost the same thing like when olig2 was expressed and when atrax was retained we have a low grade lesion when atrax is lost i hope more of you will have atrax i have seen your hospitals so atrax is lost and olig2 is also lost i'm going to have a high grade lesion which is also emphasized by the 
pleomorphism, anaplasia, endothelial proliferation, and my P53 positive OTG. Right? And undifferentiated glial morphology. It looks glial like I'm not able to say where it is exactly fitting into, right? I have an irregular shaped nuclei, poorly delineated cytoplasm with anaplastic features. It's like an, like an anaplastic astrocytoma, that's all. With anaplastic astrocytoma, in a pediatric population, it's positive for oligo 2 in the reactive glial cells, not in the tumor cells, right? And attracts and P53 strainings. Then I can say, think of my mutated H3 variant, and I want you to do a molecular genetics, right? Graven, mono monstrocellular morphology. It's monstrocellular, right? They're just giving it a different name to make it sound more uh, uh, attractive, that's all. Graven, multinuclear gene cell, lots of anaplasia. It's monstrocellular. Okay? Again, here have, you will have necrosis as well. Negative olive 2 staining and positive for TB3 and Atrax lox. Same like my PNAT morphology, right? They're going to have the same appearance like my PNAT morphology. That's a good one, monstrocellular morphology. The third one, fourth one is oligoid morphology, which looks like an oligoid endoglioma. But I, please don't classify them as oligoid endogliomas. So oligoid endogliomas like morphology, we'll have a look at layered reporting soon. So where the, primer, the primary diagnosis morphologically looks like an oligoid endoglioma, with my per clear perinuclear halo, anaplastic feature, endothelial proliferation. So morphology wise, I'll think of an anaplastic oligoid endoglioma. Mitosis more, my um, oligo 2 will be positive in my reactive cells. T53 positive and attracts loss will be there. That's classical. So microscopy, the layer structure reporting says like that. Microscopy have a thing, an integrated diagnosis, a molecular diagnosis and the grading system. These are the four things required in the in, uh, layered reporting of the new WHO. We'll look at them soon. We'll have a detailed discussion about layer reporting soon. Fine. So we have four different types of morphology. PNET like, undifferentiated layer, monstrocellular and oligoid. This is the article which explains everything. See, the most important thing for me is Atrax is retained in my second morphology, that's the undifferentiated layer morphology, but Atrax is lost in most of the other ones, okay? And Olig2 is again lost in most of the other ones. Again, here in the, your Oligoid and your uh, undifferentiated layer morphology, the B and D, Olig2 will be retained, but not in the tumor cells, it will be retained in the surrounding glial cells. How you can appreciate them is, see, the amount of positivity of Olig2 here, compared to my PF3 is less. So the positive is not the tumor cells, the reactive glial cells. But invariably, almost everything will have a very strong P3 positivity. So that I can keep it as a uh, mark thing to say, it's definitely a high grade lesion, fine. So I have four morphologies, a round cell morphology, and undifferentiated glial morphology, and monstrocellular morphology. This is a monstrocellular morphology, though it's a very low, a small image. Still I can see the pleomorphic giant cells here, right? monstrocellular and an oligoid again so it's a very small image if you can a bit strain your eyes you can see the halo around the blue cells right so having a classical morphology i'm going to do an ilc workup and i'm going to wait for my either ilc of the h3 g34 r by v or your molecular genetics of h3 uh, histone 3 g34 mutant right that's very important right and one thing which has been said that is the diffuse K27 mutant should be reserved for only tumors which are infiltrating midline and shows K27 mutant and not for my other things because we had two diffuse gliomas, two H3 mutant, one was K27N, other was G34. So this K27N was also present in the previous WHO classification and they said that please don't apply this for every tumors. If it's an ependymoma mutant for H3K27N, don't report them as midline glioma. Please report only if they are gliomas which are infiltrating and should not be applied for any other tumors because this mutation can be seen in many other tumors like said here ependymomas fine okay coming to the prognosis again the purpose of reclassification for me is to make sure the prognosis typically it will be helpful either in the good or the worse the mean survival of an h3 g34 glioma is better than those of an idh wild type gbms the glioblastomas right that's very very important but my H3K27 mutated glioma are worse than my IDH mutated GM, GBMs. Again, wild type and GBMs. The thing why I'm using this is, I want to disregard the uh, diagnosis of glioblastoma in a kid because these variants, when I'm very, very specific, I know what's exactly happening and I'll be able to give a perfect prognosis. I can exactly say this, how much they're gonna survive. And if at all there, some molecular um, targeted therapy as well. We'll have a quick look. This is an update which is came after WHO 2021. It is done in 2020 by Chen et al. 
so they have found that in the gliomas which are my h3 uh, histone 3 g34 mutated they found lots of pdgfri mutations this is something good for me because they have, and they have said that this pdgfri is the one which is going to primarily promote the glio uh, the gliomagenesis the tumor genesis which is very good for me because pdgfri is a very well known mutation for us in your leukemias the eosinophilic leukemias and also in the gist where we had therapies against them so what we did was we tried imatinib with these patients this imatinib are not so perfect because they are first generation drugs not so perfect but there are definitely future drugs afraptinib which are developed and by approved by who which can be perfectly useful for my gist same pdgfra exonating mutation but if i'm going to apply them for this diffuse glioma will they respond or not the future will see if it responds it's very 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 good for the patients right okay so these are two tumors you want to discuss i have many series of question um, videos short videos on who to 20 unit classification hopefully we'll read together better and hopefully we'll uh, we'll diagnose them better as well fine and if you're a postgraduate student do follow me in the academy app and there's a pathology group for postgraduates a channel and a group we are close to reaching to thousand students hopefully we'll be able to reach more students and we'll learn more for pathology in the um, thing of diagnosis not just from the entrance point of view fine we're going to apply more concepts i'm having a few good cases and i'll share with you and will you also share the cases with me and we we'll, together will grow and all these special classes hosted in the academy will be free of course i'll be interactive it'll be live we can ask you i'll ask questions you can ask videos whatever you have you can download the ppt whatever i share the images with you all the slides annotations everything will be there so you can use it later in life because if you're not having enough time to take a note you can just listen to them you can just listen to them wherever you want in your mobile phone or in your tablet or in the laptop fine hopefully we will uh, slowly venture into neat ssmc 